So in this video I'm going to connect the variable frequency drive, which is that thing over there, to the spindle using its cable. Luckily, someone who's already built a Moot 1 CNC machine happened to use one of these style inverters and has left me some notes so I can hopefully program it a little bit more easily. The notes didn't make a great deal of sense at first, but I eventually worked out the right settings, which I'll share as a PDF document on my Patreon page. But before I started programming the VFD, I had to connect it to the spindle. The wiring order between the VFD and spindle is arbitrary. If it spins the wrong way, just swap any two wires around at one end. I went to use the cabling I had from the previous machine, but later realized I had made some mistakes. In the new VFD manual, there are clear instructions about what to do. Well, sort of clear. Looks like a weird Christmas decoration. One, I'm using the base of the VFD as the earth connector. Plus I have a backing plate. Two, the backing plate is galvanized so it won't rust and provides a common contact point for all the components and will help protect them from electromagnetic interference. Three, I have the ferrite core but you only have to coil the free motor cables three times through the core and not the earth wire. Four, I don't have a metal clamp for the armor, which I'm using as shielding, but I can either drain that to the backing plate or earth terminal on the variable frequency drive. Five, I'm using SY cable, which has braided screening, although foil is meant to be better, but I'm not sure why it says to use four core cable here when there's only three shown in the diagram. Six, I hadn't separated the protective earth cable from the free motor cores. Although it does say this is the preferred method, especially for large output cables and longer length, multi-core screen, free core and protective earth can be used for small power and short lengths. So I think using four core is okay, but it's not clear what is a large output cable and long length. 7. This is where all the advice on shielding cabling on one end only on all the CNC forums is contradicted as it's required to connect the shielding with a good 360 degree termination to earth at the spindle end as well as clamping onto the backing plate in section 4. 8. And the protective earth for the spindle housing goes back to the termination on the VFD and does not get looped around the ferrite core. To edit the different functions in the various groups on the VFD, you first need to press the mode button several times until you see the function numbers. You can then change the digits with the up and down buttons and use the left arrow button to move between the individual numbers. A long hold on the left arrow button, which also functions as an enter button, reveals the mode values, which you can also change with the up and down arrows. Once those are adjusted, a long hold of the enter button ends the edit and the new values are set. I think what I'm going to do is just crack on with this and implement what I've got here and see whether it works for my setup. And then I'll get this stuff into a Excel document which I can then go over on camera a little bit more easily. Okay, so this is the Excel document that I've written up and these are the various groups and they have different headings. So for example, group four is the analog signal input, which I didn't actually change much here. What I did change was the multifunction digital input output so that I could create the sort of behaviors that I wanted to have with the CNC machine, such as number 14, which is a rapid stop, and that particular terminal S4 is connected to my emergency stop. Um, one thing I did do on this mach machine that I didn't do on with the old VFD, I decided to change the motor rating, uh, even though my spindle has a etching on the side saying that it's 8 amps I specified its rating to 80% of that and for the no load current to 10% I dropped everything down to 20% for the slip compensation gain 
Uh, I might even change that to ten percent. I just don't think it needed to be as high as it was set before. And oh, I didn't notice this bit before. So you can actually can change the way the signal works from either normally open, normally closed. That's interesting because it means I can set up an external switch trigger, such as for the e-stop, so that if it disconnects, it will read as triggered and will provide an additional failsafe, which is what I've done with some of the buttons directly to the duet. Although thinking about it, it's only going to be a true failsafe if the e-stop alarm can also alert the duet board and prevent a job from actually running. There's so many things to think about. Okay, so I am in the process of programming the variable frequency drive. You can see I've got some cables coming through it and they come down to this section here as well as to the 24 to 10 volt um, adapter here, PWM adapter. The important initial setting was 00-04 operation mode for external terminals, which is set to 1. This makes the S1 input start and stop the spindle, and the S2 input define the direction, which is either reverse or forward. S1 is wired via the PWM converter from the duet, but I've not wired the S2 terminal, as it's very unlikely I'll ever run at all in reverse. To control the speed, the signal and ground from the PWM to analog converter is wired into the AVI and analog ground on the VFD. And I've also been able to select between two different speed inputs. So I can go from the uh, controller and then by flicking a switch, I could then use the potentiometer on the actual VFD. I then set the S3 input to 13 main forward slash alternative frequency command select, which is wired to a latching two position selector switch. While option 00-07 is set to zero main or alternative frequency, one switch position selects the main input mode via 00-05, which is option two external AVI analog signal input. And the second position for now utilizes option one potentiometer on keypad but I'm planning to install a signal generator and use option three, external ACI analog signal input at a future date. So at the moment, if I try and move the potentiometer, it doesn't do anything. And then if I flick the switch, you can see I can set the speed based on this and it ignores the input coming from the controller back to zero. Um, I've also wired in an e-stop directly to the VFD so that it will stop a little bit quicker if the e-stop is pressed but what I found is I need to use a latching uh, style emergency stop so like this one here so when it's pressed it clicks into place and then you have to twist to reset the S4 input is connected to the emergency stop which is now a latching type and performs option 14 rapid stop deacceleration to stop the speed of which is defined by option 00-17 and is set to 5 seconds. Under normal M5 stopping operation, option 00-15 sets the speed and is around 9 seconds. Input S5 is unused. If I send a M3 S20000 command, spindle turns on. And you can see the potentiometer doesn't do anything. And when I turn this switch, you can see I can adjust the speed. And if I press the E stop, two, three, four, it shuts off in four seconds, and I get an emergency message on the screen plus I am asked to reset the controller. If it's pressed and I try to reset the machine it's going to think that it's disconnected and I'm not going to be able to move on from there. Until I address the issue although later I will wire the ESOP to trip the MVR switch so this message will only ever turn up if one particular wire becomes disconnected. The question is, is what would happen to the spindle during a power outage so if the NVR switch was pressed and we'll do the same thing so M3 S20000 we'll let it 
come to speed. And I suspect it might coast. So we're at max speed. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There are some issues with the spindle stopping that I need to sort out such as the spindle coasting to a stop if the mains on off button is pressed or if power is lost and that the virtual e-stop in the web interface and on the panel duo does not behave the same as the physical one. I'm going to turn this back on again and see how much time it takes for the spindle to stop if I use the emergency stop in the web interface or on the touchscreen. So it's powered up, connecting to the controller, M3 S20 1000 send. I'm going to press this one over here. Okay. I've requested on the Duet forum if the M112 command be amended to also switch a pin which could be used to trigger the VFD, but we'll see if any of the programmers bite on that one. I suspect there's probably a way of using variable expressions to create this behavior in relation to that command, but I just don't have the time at the moment to figure this one out. The last few things I did included unlooping the earth wire from the spindle, which I forgot to film, so here's a photo, exposing a bit of the cable braid and connecting it to the backing plate, wiring an RCD plug end to the CNC power cable and to connect the live wire before the MVR switch using Wago connectors in series to the normally closed and common terminals of two channels on a relay module. I then connected their input terminals to the e-stop and PS underscore on pin so that I could shut the entire system down by tripping the MVR switch either during an emergency stop or by sending the MAT command. Let it come up to speed. I think that worked. Basically, this is pressed. So if it's pressed, it won't turn on, but I think you've got to be careful in that situation because it could cause a short or fry something. So I think this video has reached its natural end. There was again a bit too much information there, but I hope it will make wiring and programming your VFD a little more simpler. You may have noticed some wiring illustrations in this video, and those will be available via my Patreon page in drips and drabs while I still make sense of everything. Thanks again for watching, and you'll catch me in the next one.